Welcome to the World Radio Communication Conference 2023, WRC 23, here in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio by Irene Kagwasiwan Kambo, who is the Director of Engineering, Communications and Infrastructure for the Uganda Communications Commission. Irene, welcome to the studio. A pleasure to be here. No problem. My, my pleasure. Thank you. Now, I'd like to start off a little bit, of course, by asking you, why is this particular event important to you? I know you're no stranger to ITU events, uh, but why is the World Radio Communication Conference important for you to be here? As a developing country, or as any country for that matter, we all need, you know, for many people, they forget that anything wireless is all about frequencies. Now, we have an industry where everybody's trying to be innovative, everybody's creating everything. So how do you make sure there is order? And as a regulator, of course, order for us is very key. So the World Radio Conference gives us that opportunity to say, this is how we're going to use this band. This is how we're going to use this set of frequencies. Because as a developing country, I don't, I don't manufacture most things. I depend on importation. And when you have economies of scale, then the things are cheaper for my people. So it pays when we have that coordination externally, because then the industry knows what services, what equipment is going in what bands, and makes the work of us regulators a lot more um, easier to handle. So that whole, what I have to do at the national level is also mirrored at the international level in terms of the coordination, uh, with other countries, in terms of coordination among the services. And at the end of the day, you know, to the less techie, we are always sounding like, those people, what are they doing there? But that's all we're doing, making sure we harmonize ourselves, we agree and coordinate on what is done in what band. Now, you mentioned here, of course, you're here from a, a developing country, which means, of course, the only way is up. But uh, the, the, the challenges, of course, are also married by opportunities as well. And I just would like to just ask you a little bit about what are, are those in Uganda? What is the landscape like for radio communications currently like? Oh, I love that you asked that question. You know, when back in the day, <laughs> when I joined Uganda Communications Commission, we were looking at ourselves as being disadvantaged because... We didn't have many fixed connectivity. Many people didn't have fixed lines. We just had around 30,000 people in the whole country that had telephone lines. And we're thinking, when will we catch up? So in a country where you want to make sure, you know, for us, the living no one behind is a reality for us. How do you make sure you're going to connect to everybody? We would love to have fiber to every home. But I'm talking about a country that has people, yes, who can afford it, Others are in grass, thatched house. So even optical fiber is a joke to them. And yet you're saying you want to connect them. You have the hills, you have the forests, you have the lakes, you know, the mountains. How do you provide connectivity to that? So this conference is actually very key to us because as a developing country, wireless communication becomes such an opportunity to leapfrog. And the different technologies like satellites, uh, you know, for us, Mobile was such a game changer for us because we were able to come from those 30 lines to now 32 million subscribers in a country that has 40 years. Of course, then you're like, oh, you've almost connected everybody. Unfortunately, no, because I have almost 52% of my population below the age of 18. But yes, when you have the realities of such a country, then indeed... Uh, the wireless technologies give us an opportunity to make that reality of having every Ugandan participate in the economy, leaving no one behind, enjoy broadband services, telephony, radio. That's why we've almost held the whole world back in terms of FM radio, because for us now, these are key opportunities to make it a reality of leaving no one behind. And Tell me, what about the, the outcomes of this conference? Are there any particular outcomes that you would like to see come from this? Oh, there are many. But of course, there are those priority ones. Um, as I said, one of them, I feel like Christmas came early <laughs> just this week. Uh, because for many of us, you know, we've been talking about every country wanting to have orbital slots and orbital resources. But for many of us, that was no longer possible in terms of the resources we had. So in 2019, uh, we celebrated when Resolution 559 was passed 
And that seemed like now a reality. So Revolution 559, for those who are uninitiated? Uh, was about uh, making orbital slots available uh, for a number of countries whose satellite resources had now been degraded by the use of, of the other, other people who had gone in first. Now, making that possible has also been a process where, again, we're thankful to the ITU for the support they have been given in gas. And then the conference as I say, give us an early Christmas present by um, allowing under agenda item number seven, that has become a popular <laughs> agenda item because it deals with all the satellite related issues. So the modification to Appendix 30 has again made that possible that what was started in 2019 has become a reality. And 41 countries, developing countries, now have an opportunity to have orbital slots or, or, you know, satellite resources that they can use in terms of their satellite programs. And that was, for me, one of the key things that I, I wanted to see from this conference, and I'm thankful that that happened. The other is, yes, we're saying leaving no one behind. We want to have everybody having broadband services. So we desire to see, and we know that this is a technology that can realize that quickly and cheaply. We are always looking for all the options, wireless. That's why we're even technology neutral and saying, if it's Wi-Fi, if it's everything, please come as long as you provide affordable services. However, we are in a situation where we don't have, not only do our people lack resources in terms of affordability, we also have challenges in terms of the capital required to do the necessary investments. So much as we are still all trying to absorb the consequences of the digital migration in terms of um, terrestrial television, many of us are still struggling to make that a reality across the country. So whereas the whole world is ready to move in terms of um, the frequency range from 470 to um, really they look at the whole 960, but we could look earlier than that since some of it has already been migrated. We're not yet ready. So what I'd want to see from um, this WRC is still how we can have a bit more time so that that investment, we're just putting it out there. We are the technical people, we understand the industry, but to the rest, they're like, are you mad? Are you crazy? What, what are you doing? People still need television services. The government still needs to provide people information educate them, entertain them. And this is the platform that's out there. People don't yet have mobile phones and smartphones. So we still need that balance. And that's another thing I would want to see this WRC find a middle ground between, yes, I appreciate the other countries have moved on, they want to move on, they're eager to, you know, go there. We, we're now looking to 6G coming on. But how do you accommodate us so that you don't leave us behind in that? So that's another area that I would wish to see. And finally, the other one would be to see still how we can continue fostering innovation. Innovation that ensures affordable services to the people. Innovation that brings a new experience. We want the digitalization driving all the development in the world. I was going to ask you, where do you see Uganda in 10 years' time? But, uh, but actually, 10 years is quite a long time. Let's just even just go five years, let's say, because everything goes so quickly. So uh, what, what's your vision for the future for Uganda? Oh, I want to see... I, I fully subscribe to the vision of Uganda Communications Commission, which is an inclusive digital economy where we have everybody participating legal or, nat or natural, <laughs> I've realized. So seeing an economy that's fully driven by that digitalization would be a dream come true. And I think we're on the journey there. Well, that's brilliant. Well, Irene, thank you so much for My joining pleasure. us in the studio today. It's been an absolute pleasure having you here, as always. And I'm sure we will catch up again very soon. And in the meantime, we wish you all the very best. And of course, uh, look forward to, uh, to being able to get some more insights, valuable insights from you in the future. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much indeed. Right. And if you've enjoyed this interview, then why not check out our other interviews on our YouTube channel, as well as our podcasts on SoundCloud, Spotify, or Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And for further information, visit our website at www.itu.int. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>